governor incorporates a mechanism. There is a mechanism inside the governor where the load on the engine increases, automatically speed will increase, speed will decrease, sorry. So you have to increase the supply of the working fuel. That is maybe a petrol or diesel, whatever you have, okay. Vice versa, if the load on the engine decreases, arrow is in a downward direction, the speed of the engine will increase. So obviously, you will have to cut off the supply of the working fuel, right. So this is what we have understand. The governor hence can be defined as the governor can be called as a device or a mechanism which automatically controls the supply of working fluid to the engine when there are variations in the load. This is a very very simple function of a governor which I have explained in the last lecture, right? Next we have understand what are the types of governor. So basically we will be dealing with two types of governor, centrifugal governor and the inertia governor, right? Uh, then we started with the classification. So basically, centrifugal governor is divided into the two types, pendulum and the loaded type. So yesterday I have already explained you the concept of the pendulum, right? Uh, or you can see the mechanics behind it or the force diagram behind it, right? So in the pendulum, we will be studying wide governor and in the loaded type, means what? We are going to apply extra, like a dead weight or you can say a spring control governor. So there are two types of governor, right? And then a dead weight governor, again we have a porter governor, royal governor and spring control governor, we have a hardware governor. So as far as the last lecture is concerned, I have helped you to understand that. So we will be dealing with these three types. The first is the wide governor, second one is the porter governor and third one is a hardware governor. Okay. So today we, have go we are going to understand the force analysis. What we are going to understand? The force analysis of bad governor, portal governor, and hardware governor. Okay. So these are the three basic governors what we'll be studying. So we are not going to study all this type of the governor. I hope it is clear, right? Uh, then I started with the concept of centrifugal governor, right? So basically, uh, I explained you yesterday, I have given you the example of a starting motor, right? Right. So how does the centrifugal force goes on increasing? So basically, how we denote centrifugal force? m r into omega square, right? So what is the first of all principle? The balancing of a centrifugal force, which is given by Fc on the rotating balls. So you can see these are the rotating balls, which are also called as a fly balls, right? So these are nothing but the fly balls. So balancing of a centrifugal force on the rotating balls by an equal and opposite radial force, okay? So for example, let us say, uh, this is a center point, okay? So this is nothing but the Fc. Okay, so what is this Fc? Fc is nothing but a centrifugal force which is acting away from the center of rotation of this fly ball. So what I mean to say is that as the speed goes on increasing, as the speed will goes on increasing, as your m goes on increasing, n is nothing but rpm. Okay, speed, what will happen? This centrifugal force which is nothing but m r omega square that will also go on increasing, right? So as the centrifugal force goes on increasing, you have to balance this centrifugal force. So this centrifugal force is balanced by equal and opposite force which is nothing but the FR or you can also call it as a FC which is called as a controlling force. Okay. So we have to design, we have to do the force analysis of a governor in such a way that we have to balance this FR and FC. I hope it is clear to you, all of you, right? So now first of all let us understand the working of a centrifugal governor. Uh, now <coughs> you can see the figure in front of you. Okay, so first of all, uh, let us understand uh, some basic, you can say the construction and the working of a centrifugal Because once you understand the construction and the working of the centrifugal governor, okay, uh, I will, it will helpful for us to understand the force analysis. So see, what you can see. Uh, so basically, this is the schematic diagram of a centrifugal governor. So it consists of two balls, okay. So this one is the first one, this one is the second one. So these are called as the fly balls, okay. So fly balls means what? They will have some mass m in kgs, right? They will have a mass m in kgs. We have so number one and number two, right? Uh, now, for the arm, and similarly, it is to the another side. It is attached to the links. So what we have in the centrifugal governor, the two fly masses or the two fly balls, then the two arms, arm one, arm two, and then we have a two links, link one and link two. 
so in this way uh, it creates a kite like a section like having a two masses attached to the arms and the you can say the links right so we have a two links two fly masses and two arms i hope you understand this okay now <laughs> this balls revolves along with the spindle now you can see this is the central portion central axis so this this is nothing but the central axis of a spindle or you can also call it the axis of spindle right so this is nothing but a spindle okay now this spindle is connected to the bevel gears means what it is connected to some sort of you can say the input so you are giving some sort of sort of input right so with the help of that input that is a bevel gears okay the spindle will revolve about this axis okay now this spindle is connected to the arms at the upper end as well as it is connected to the links at the lower end right and this arms and the links are connected to the fly masses so this fly masses will revolve or will rotate about this axis of the spindle is it clear okay so <coughs> now basically uh, again there is one more component called as a sleeve so you can see this one more component called as a sleeve can you see this component sleeve okay now this sleeve is mounted at the lower end of the spindle spindle okay now basically uh, the sleeves the sleeve will also revolve with the spindle is it correct the sleeve which is mounted at the lower end of the spindle now this sleeve will also revolve along with the spindle okay but but this sleeve is able to slide up and down so this sleeve has a two motions i can say one is a rotational motion i hope you understand this and second is a translational motion translational motion so what i mean to say is that the sleeve will revolve or rotate along with the spindle and the sleeve is able to slide up and down okay now basically what happens the ball this ball are nothing but this fly balls or the masses okay these balls and the or the fly masses and the sleeve will rise when the spindle speed increases okay and falls when the spindle speed decreases i hope you understand this statement let me elaborate okay what i mean to say is that as the speed speed of what let us the speed of the spindle is n rpm so as the speed of the spindle will go on increasing what will happen this fly masses will start moving outwards start moving outward means what they will rise okay as well as the sleeve will move in a upward direction means what the sleeve will also rise right so as the speed increases fly masses and the sleeve they will rise means what they will lift from that position the sleeve will lift upward and this fly masses will move outward okay so you can call it as a outward also rise or you can also call it as a outward or you can call it as a rise or upward okay so these are nothing but the two is it clear now this is the first statement what i have explained you and secondly when the spindle speed n rpm will increase spindle speed increase means what the speed of the obviously this spindle is somewhere connected to the input that is the engine ic engine or you can call it as a uh, crankshaft also okay so the power is coming from the engine right through with the help of this bevel gears okay so speed will increase and decrease as i earlier said so as the n rpm decreases what will happen the sleeve will fall or will will not it will move downward and this fly masses will move inward they will move inward means what they will also start falling so these are nothing but the two positions these are called as a position number 1 and position number 2 which position the position of the fly masses okay so now based on this what exactly happens how the what so finally what is my my dear students what is the function of uh, governor to supply the working fluid whenever required and to cut off the working fluid right so exactly with the help of these two positions how this particular mechanism achieves the function okay so basically what i meant to say is that we have to now understand the working so let us guys understand the working so i hope you don't have any doubt in the construction okay so i hope you understand so we have a basically two okay one more point these are nothing but a two s what is this s s is called watches this is nothing but a why it is used in order to limit the travel of the sleeve to limit the travel of the sleeve okay so basically we know that uh, there should be a limitation on the movement of the sleeve means what how much the sleeve will move downward and how much the sleeve will move, move the upward 
okay because already my dear students i have given the example of starting motor so as the centrifugal as the speed will go on increasing the centrifugal force will also go on increasing what is centrifugal force fc is equal to mr omega square so what happens if the centrifugal force goes on increasing means what if m increases r increases and even if omega increases the centrifugal force goes on increasing and what will happen your starting motor will get destroyed right so similarly here also the case is same you have to limit the centrifugal force and obviously you have to limit the sleeve movement okay so this is that is why the stop watches are used okay now before wasting our time now let us understand the construction so now when the load on the engine increases okay let us say i am writing here the load increases i have shown in by the upward load on what load on the engine increases okay now exactly how does this mechanism works we are going to understand how this mechanism works and that for that i will write here as the load increases what will happen the speed will decrease right load increases speed increases okay so what will happen this result in the decrease of the centrifugal force on the balls what will happen the centrifugal force on this fly masses will decrease because already i have explained you that fc is equal to r on r omega square so as the omega or as the r as the m increases fc will increase but now what i am saying load is increase speed is decrease so fc will also decrease fc means what centrifugal force which is acting in this fashion outwards from the center of the fly mass this will also decrease okay so what will happen this fly masses this fly masses will move inward te kute move hona re they will move inward right so as the fly masses move inwards what will happen your sleeve will move downward sleeve will move downward right and when the sleeve will move downward it will operate the bell crank lever and this downward movement of the sleeve will also operate the total wall and what will happen what will happen what will happen okay this total wall will open at a maximum position right means what your total wall will open wide or you can say it will open the total wall wide or at a maximum position and what will happen the more amount of because we have to increase increase the see load has increased speed has decreased means you have to increase the amount of the working fluid right so you have to open the total wall at a greater extent right so this is how the system works this is the case number 1 have you understand shall i repeat it see very simple you keep it simple i am also keeping it simple load increases speed decreases centrifugal force will also decrease means fly masses will move inward shall i write here fly masses will move inward sleeve will move downward this will operate the bell crank lever this will operate the throttle wall and it will open wide and what will happen it will increase the fuel supply guys i hope you have, it is clear to you okay so this is the first case now what is the case number 2 let us say on the other hand load on the engine decreases let us say load on the engine decreases so when the load on the engine decreases what will happen the speed will increases so this is nothing but a centrifugal force so centrifugal force fc is nothing but the m r omega square so fc increases now once your fc increases what what will happen this fly masses fly masses will move outward now when the fly masses move outwards what will happen this see whenever the fly masses are moving outwards there is a extension of the arms and the legs so what will happen the sleeve will move upward okay the so sleeve will move and thod ke tumche sleeve will lift hote the sleeve is will lift sleeve moves upward so that will operate the bell crank lever that will close the total wall not completely close but it will bring the total wall at the minimum position it will means what your total wall is now no more wide open the fuel supply it decreases the fuel supply so i hope it is clear to you now okay so this is nothing but a function of the centrifugal lever now just message me fast whether you have understand both the cases and the construction so i can move to the next point have you understand the working of the centrifugal governor in both the cases is it clear all of you okay so basically you have to just understand 
load increases, speed decreases. Then what happens to the FC? What happens to the sleeve? Sleeve is moving upward or downward. Total wall is at the minimum position or the maximum position. Fuel supply increases or decreases. Just that is all about a centrifugal force. So I hope you have understand this. Now basically, let us come to the now. Whatever the diagram I have explained you, so this is the you can say uh, a force diagram. This can be called as a force diagram of a governor. Which type of governor? That is not a question here. You just understand this is a force diagram. Now I have drawn a force diagram for you because obviously this subject is all about the analytic analysis. So we we are not interested only in the theory. We have to understand the terms using the governor force. Now this let let us. Let us focus on this diagram. First couple focus on this diagram, and let us understand uh, what is this. Now, what is FC? FC is nothing but a, what is FC? FC is nothing but a centrifugal force which is acting away from the center of rotation. What is W? W is nothing but the weight of the mass, fly mass, which is nothing but the m into g newton. FC will be newton. P is nothing but the pivot point, right? And then next, this H is nothing but the height. Now. H is called as a governor height. What is the H? H is nothing but the governor height. So let us understand first of all what is the height of the governor. Now we know that. Now we know that there is a movement of the sleeve upward, movement of the sleeve upward, and movement of the sleeve downward. Okay. So basically, what I mean to is that your sleeve will lift. There is a concept called as a sleeve lift, which I will be explaining later on. So the sleeve is lifting. when it is moving upward okay or it is moving downward also right so basically based on the sleeve lift okay your h there is a height of the governor will change so basically first of all let us understand what is height of the governor and let us let us understand the relation between the sleeve lift and the height of the governor okay so very very important uh, point so it is a vertical distance between the center of the ball so this is the center of the balls Or you can say the fly masses, okay, vertical distance between the center of the one and where the axis of the arms. Now you can know, you know, these are nothing but the arms, okay. So axis of the arms, so these are nothing but the axis, okay. So they are meeting at a common point called as a O or a common point called as a P, which is nothing but the pivot point, right? So where it meets, so where the axis of arms intersect on the spindle axis, very very important. very very important definition height of the governor is a vertical distance means what the distance between this point let us call as a point a and the point b the distance between the point a and point b is nothing but the h that is the height of the governor that is the distance from the center of the ball to the point where the axis of arms these are nothing but the arms for example let us say axis of arms so now in this case let us now see let 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 us talk about the second case now in second case Now in this first case, what do you understand? This P, P is what? First of all, P is what? Pivot point. This is a very important point you have to understand. So now this pivot point is lying on the spindle axis. Pivot point is this is nothing but a spindle axis. So pivot point is lying on the spindle axis. Okay. So at the pivot, so the axis of this is nothing but the arms. Okay. So the two arms intersect at the pivot point. So what I mean to say is that the intersection point of the two arms, which arms? is arm number 2 and arm number 1 is same as that of the p so no matter so distance between the point a and b is nothing but h but now in this case you can see that the spindle axis and the point p they are not intersecting they are at the offset right you can see can you see in the figure this point p this point p here is not on this spindle axis is not on this spindle axis so we are not considering that what we are considering that we are considering the intersection point of the two arms so o is nothing but the intersection point o is nothing but the ah this is the point o and point b is the section point is here right so then the distance between the o and this point b is nothing but what height of the governor okay is it clear 
So this is called as the height of the governor. Now, just I want to know from your side, what is the interconnection between the sleeve lift? Sleeve lift means what? Either sleeve will move upward or either sleeve will move up. Now, just tell me, let us say that sleeve moves upward. So what will happen to the height edge? The height edge will decrease or increase. Have you understand my question? My question is that if sleeve, if sleeve moves decrease. upward, yes, very nice. So as the sleeve, so that is very, very important point you have to understand when you're solving a problem. So as the sleeve, as the sleeve goes on, moves upward, sleeve moves upward means what? Sleeve lift, sleeve lift goes on increasing. When sleeve moves upward, your edge will decrease and vice versa. When your sleeve will move downwards, your height H will increase. Okay. And the sleeve lift is denoted by X. Sleeve lift. So X is equal to sleeve lift. Okay. I will explain you later on. But I hope you have understood this. Is it clear? So this is all about the terms. So this is nothing but a mathematical force diagram which indicates FC W R. Now what is the R? R is nothing but a radius of rotation. R is nothing but a radius of rotation. Now I also want to answer from your side that what is the distance between this, the spindle axis. Distance between the spindle axis, let me call this as a point S. Distance between the point S and the center of the mass is nothing but a R. Okay. So now just tell me, R is nothing but a radius of rotation means this fly masses, this fly balls, you can also call it as a balls, fly balls. These are rotating about this point P about the pivot point, okay? So that distance between them is nothing but the R, the radius of rotation, okay? Now tell me, when will the R increase and where will the R decrease? So when you will get the R max and when you will get the R minimum? So my point of asking a question is, we have a three uh, terms, R max, R and R minimum. Similarly, now tell me, when will be R max, when will be R and when will be R max, okay? So R is nothing but the radius of rotation. So R is nothing but when your speed will be N, right? R max is nothing but when your speed will be N max and R max is nothing but when your speed will be N minimum, right? So when the speed will go on increasing, your R will go on increasing, means what? Your centrifugal force will also increase. So when the FC is maximum, you will get an R maximum. And FC is minimum, you will get an R minimum. So my dear students, what I want to understand is that this R is a variable factor. R is a variable factor, right? So almost this R is a variable factor, okay? Obviously W is constant, the mass is constant. So W is equal to mg, it is nothing but a constant. R is a variable depending upon the speed. So FC, R is variable means what? FC is also variable. So if you look at the formula, FC is equal to R, R omega square. N is constant, R is variable, and obviously omega is also variable. What is omega? Omega is nothing but the 2 pi N by 60. And let us say, uh, now whenever you are designing a governor, you have to design it at some range. For example, let us take an example of a ward governor. So what governor is designed for 60 to 80 RPM? Okay. When you take an example of a uh, Porter governor, so Porter governor will go up to 5000 RPM, let us say. Okay. So this is a range. How we decide is the range and exactly what is the logic behind this that we'll understand later. Okay. So is it clear? I hope you understand its terms. Okay. So now next. Equilibrium speed. Now, what is equilibrium speed? The first of all, very, very important term, my dear students. Uh, just message me whether you have understand the last concept, that is a R, radius of rotation, uh, then you, whether you have understand the height of the governor, H, and what is the relation between the sleeve? Have you understand this? Yes or no? I know. As it be. So can anybody tell me equilibrium speed? Equilibrium speed. Now to understand the equilibrium speed, I always say that there is moment of sleep. Means what? Sleeve moves upward, sleeve moves upward, and sleeve moves downward. Sleeve moves downwards. 
सो टेल मी व्हेन द स्लीव विल मूव अपवर्ड एंड द व्हेन द स्लीव विल मूव डाउनवर्ड तुमचं स्लीव ची अपवर्ड होणार आहे आणि डाउनवर्ड मूवमेंट कधी होणार आहे थोडी सांगू शकेल रिलेटेड टू द स्पीड आय एम आस्किंग रिलेटेड टू द स्पीड सो व्हेन द स्पीड इंक्रीजेस राईट स्पीड इंक्रीजेस स्लीव ची मूवमेंट अपवर्ड होईल इज इट करेक्ट ऑर नॉट व्हेन द स्पीड इंक्रीजेस ओके Uh, and when the speed decreases, the sleeve will move downward. Am I correct? Okay. So when you start, when the governor, as a mechanism, as a device, starts operating, you can see that there is a change in the speed. There is a change in the speed from n minimum, from zero to n minimum to n maximum. So what I mean to say is that there is a change in the speed. Means what? There is a fluctuation in the speed from the n minimum to n maximum. So somewhere, somewhere we have to design, or we design the governor in such a manner that at some point of time it reaches the equilibrium speed. It reaches the equilibrium speed means what? It reaches the n speed. That is the equilibrium speed means what? It is the speed at which governor balls, arms, etc. are in the complete equilibrium. governor balls arms etc are in the complete equilibrium and the sleeve does not tend to move upwards or downwards that is a definition is what i mean to say is that it is such a speed means once the governor starts ekda ka tumcha governor chalu jala ek ashi position yete ek asa point yeto jeva tumcha speed e equilibrium speed hota manje teva ka asnar hai tumcha jo r asel that your r is constant now your r is constant and your x is also constant what is r r is nothing but the radius of rotation what is x sleeve lift okay means what your sleeve will neither tend to move upward neither tend to move downward and also your governor balls are in complete equilibrium means what your r is constant means your r is neither increase r is neither decrease so such a condition is called as a equilibrium speed now just tell me have you understand this or not is it clear so i think you have understand this okay <laughs> okay next mean equilibrium speed now uh, to understand the mean equilibrium speed first of all understand the maximum and minimum equilibrium speeds okay now again you will say sir what is equilibrium speed okay equilibrium speed is nothing but the speed when r is again a constant and where again uh, x is nothing but a constant so means what the governor balls or arms are in complete equilibrium and the sleeve does not tend to move upwards or downwards that is the equilibrium speed then what is maximum and minimum equilibrium speed now that is also because you see these three terms are slightly confusing they pretend to be similar they pretend to be similar but they are not similar that is why i am trying to explain you from the heart right so the speed is at the maximum and minimum radius of rotation of the ball without tending to move either way are known as maximum and minimum equilibrium speeds so guys what i mean to say is that let let me move to the last slide and then okay so now you can see this is a r okay so this is a r right so there is a r minimum right there is a r minimum means what the radius of rotation of ball is minimum okay because you are designing a governor for some range and again there is a r maximum right so when your r is r minimum please listen carefully when your r is r minimum mujhe tumcha r ha minimum asel mujhe tumcha radius of rotation ha minimum position la asel jo r ha tumcha minimum position asel when your r is minimum okay and your governor or your mechanism of a governor reaches the minimum position of a r and then now this again this r minimum is constant and again this r minimum is constant means the r minimum position la yeun tyachyamadhe kahi changes nahi mhanje thodke tumche je fly masses hai te equilibrium la pay barobar right and Is no any change means what? Means the radius of rotation will remain R minimum only. For example, uh, let me make you clear. Let us say R minimum is equal to 100 mm. Okay. 
let us say r maximum is equal to 200 mm okay so when r is equal to 100 mm it will neither become it should neither become 101 or it should neither become 102 right it should be 100 only so at such a, and again this there should be x constant means what your sleeve should not move upward or your sleeve should not move downward so such a condition is called as a minimum equilibrium position and what is maximum equilibrium position when r max is r is equal to r max it is 200 mm and it is in equilibrium condition means what it neither becomes 201 it neither becomes 202 it is constant at 200 and again there is no any change in the sleeve movement that is called as what maximum equilibrium position so i hope you have understand all these two concepts and so this is what i have written here and what is mean equilibrium speed it is a speed at the mean position of the balls or the sleeve means what the average of this maximum and minimum or you can see the mean so uh, i can write summary in this manner r r max i can write r minimum i can write here n minimum i can write here n and i can write here n max okay so now when and again very very important x should be constant what is x sleeve lift what is x sleeve lift what is x sleeve lift means what it should not move upward it should not move downward this is the first condition and what is the second condition if r is equal to r max it is called as a maximum equilibrium speed if r minimum is equal to r sorry r is equal to r minimum x is constant it is called as a minimum equilibrium speed and at r and at n it is called as a mean equilibrium speed now guys just tell me i want your feedback have you understand this because once you don't understand this it is very very difficult for you to do the analysis while solving a problem because you have to it is very very important to understand this r min r mean to r and r max so this three point this is very very important this is very very important guys can you message me on can you message me yes can you explain so again move forward if you want to yes again okay yeah so as per your request uh, what's your good name or last any, uh, last two point last two point have you understand this first of all what is equilibrium speed have you understand this what is equilibrium speed last two point sir hello hello can you understand what is equilibrium yes. speed yeah yes. what i was saying yes sir equilibrium speed is nothing but a speed ha huh? yes okay the equilibrium speed is nothing but a speed at which governor balls or arms are in a complete equilibrium and sleeve does not tend to move upwards or downwards right means what let us say that your r what is r radius of rotation have you understood let us say it is 100 mm okay and let us say that your sleeve x has now sleeve lift is 10 mm sleeve lift is 10 mm okay now let us say your governor speed is n is equal to let us say 1000 rpm okay now i want to explain you that when you can say that this 1000 rpm is equilibrium speed when you can say that this 1000 rpm is a equilibrium speed when your r is equal to 100 mm and x is equal to 10 mm and this both the terms are constant means what there should not be change in this value means what your r should be constant your r should neither increase nor decrease when so parent tum to r increase hot nahi decrease hot nahi hai tumcha fly mass chi movement honar nahi hai and then and then you can say that the governor balls are in complete equilibrium and your sleeve should neither move upward neither move downward means what let us say that it lifts its pen in it so that should be a constant in it that is called as a equilibrium speed okay and maximum and minimum equilibrium speed means what what i was saying that let us say your okay so this so say 500 okay 500 okay so when your r minimum is 500 mm okay and So let us say your sleeve lift x is equal to let us say 100 mm. Okay, so when all these values are constant, 
when all these values are constant, that is x should be 100 mm, which there should not be any movement of the sleeve upward and downward, and your value of r should be maximum and constant at maximum, means it should not neither increase further thousand, neither should decrease below thousand. Then that position is called as a minimum maximum equilibrium position. And when your R is equal to R minimum, whatever may be the value, I have just taken for example, let us say R minimum is 500 mm. Okay. And if R minimum is the 500 mm, then at this condition, the value of R minimum is not changing. Let us say 501 or 499, then that is called as a minimum equilibrium position. So equilibrium is nothing but something constant where your X will not change, your R will not change. And again, it has a maximum and minimum value because we know that. As a student, we also have some range. We get some minimum marks, we get some maximum marks. And then we sum it out. We will get a mean marks. Okay. So similarly, when we uh, consider R max and R minimum, and let us say uh, you are getting a mean position, R, then you can call it as a mean equilibrium speed. So this is as simple as it is. So I hope you have understand this now. Is it clear? Any doubts? Anybody is having a doubts on this? Okay, just message me. Have you understand these three concepts or not? Slightly complicated, confusing one, but they are again easy. Summers like Savannah. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. And okay, okay. You and last one is nothing but the sleeve rib. What is the sleeve rib? It is a vertical distance which the sleeve travels due to the change in the equilibrium speed, right? Let us say, uh, let us say uh, your equilibrium speed, let us say equilibrium speed n is equal to 1000 rpm, huh? 1000 rpm, let, let us understand. So let this n is that now, now, still now you have understand what is equilibrium speed, okay? What is equilibrium speed? Let us say n is equal to 1000, this is nothing but equilibrium speed for which r is equal to, radius of rotation is equal to let us say 100 mm, and let us say sleeve lift x is equal to 50 mm. This both the values should be constant. But over now, when the arch value can change out my x value can change out my one of our element of equilibrium speed. Okay, but at the heat equilibrium speed at 1000 rpm. Okay, now it's a sleeve lift kitty or the sleeve lift may sleeve to the cutler position low the 50 mm to position low the okay. At the let us say there's a change in the equilibrium speed. When you upon let us say this is n1. Now I move to N2. Now next equilibrium speed is 2000 RPM. Right? Next equilibrium speed is 2000 RPM. So at this case, let us say R is equal to 200 mm and X is equal to 100 mm. Okay? Just for your understanding. Okay? So then what is the sleeve? It is a vertical distance which sleeve travels due to the change in the equilibrium. Means what? The sleeve travels from 50 mm to 100 mm, right? It travels from 50 mm to 100 mm. So 100 minus 50. So X is equal to 50 mm. So sleeve lift is nothing but a 50 mm. So this is called as a sleeve lift. Now just tell me, have you understand this? I have explained you a very, very simple concept. I hope it is clear to all of you. Is it clear? Okay. So I hope you have understand sleeve lip maximum equilibrium. Zar tu mala kahi confusion asa to mala vichara mi tu mala parat sangi. Okay. So this is all about the uh, terms which you have to understand in the mechanism. Okay. Now uh, within a we have a ten minutes. So within a ten minutes we will finish off the wide government first time. So wide government comes under what concept? It comes under the concept of pendulum, right? A pendulum. I have explained you yesterday what is simple pendulum. Let us say O is the point of suspension. Take us, this is nothing but a string. This is nothing but a string. Take a small piece of ball of mass N. Okay. Now let us see you. Let us see you are giving a situation theta. What is theta? So let us say this is portion and we got the next portion of the whole portion here, right? Okay, maybe uh, it is left at your side. 
but it will come. Okay, so I am getting a two. Right, I am getting a two positions. So let this was the first position. Let me call this as second position, and let me call this as a third position. And this is nothing but angle theta, and this is nothing but angle theta. Right. So this is concept which I have already explained later. Okay. So I have given a small initial displacement to this mass m. So mass m from one position it let us say went to the point two. From two it again came to the point one. But as I earlier said that energy enters the system when you excite the system. When you give to me a mass m la theta, theta is angular displacement dila. जेवा तुम्ही मास m ला थीटा है एंगुलर डिस्प्लेसमेंट देयर व्हाट हैपन द एनर्जी एंटर द सिस्टम ओके एंड देन देयर इज अ कन्वर्जेंस ऑफ एनर्जी काइनेटिक एनर्जी टू पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड दैट इज व्हाई दिस मास m स्टार्टेड ऑसिलेट ऑसिलेटिंग बिटवीन द पॉइंट 1 2 एंड 3 एंड देन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अ ऑसिलेशन ऑफ अ सिंपल पेंडुलम ओके सो बेस्ड ऑन दिस कांसेप्ट प्लीज एनी मयूर प्लीज क्लोज योर ऑडियो वीडियो यू Please close your audio and video. Okay, thank you. Hello. Okay, so Watt governor is the most simplest governor designed by the James Watt in 1788. The name of the scientist. Name of the scientist is James Watt, and that is why. See, once you understand the uh, the analytics behind the Watt governor, it will be very very easy for you to understand the next analysis. Okay, so let us move forward. now uh, you can see the same figure i have used now this is the wad governor the simplest governor is called as a wad governor okay now you can see basically what is h h is nothing but the height of the governor right what is fc the centrifugal force now centrifugal force will always act away from the center of rotation what is w w is nothing but what weight which is nothing but the mg which is acting downward and r is nothing but the radius of rotation And T is nothing but the force which is acting inside the arms. अतः तुम चाहिए जगह arms होती है ना? This is nothing but the arms, and this is nothing but the links, right? So there will be the force acting inside the arms and the links. So that is nothing but the T, right? So this is the simplest wide governor, and these are nothing but the three positions: position number one, position number two, and position number three, right? Position number one, position number two, and what is the difference? See. In position number one, for analysis, we will consider this position number one only. Here, the point of P and O are at the same point. What is O? Intersection of arms. What is P? Pivot point. So P and O are same. Here you can see the pivot point P is offset from the spindle axis. Can you see this pivot? This pivot point P is here, and spindle axis is here. Okay. So there is an eccentricity E over here. So O and P are not at the one point, and in this third case, the pivot P is offset. The pivot P is offset, but here you get initial intersection point at this point, which is called as the O point, right? So uh, these are the three identical three positions of the Watt governor. Okay, but for analysis, you consider this position number one. Okay, so within a minute, we will do the analysis. Okay. Again, the figure. So let us say how we start with the analysis. Okay. So it will be same for the Porter governor, Hartnell governor. Okay. I hope uh, uh, you are taking down the notes. Okay. So let us say uh, first of all uh, consider this figure. Draw this figure. Now uh, basically in your examination, or uh, you have to just draw only this figure. Okay. Forget about these two figures, which are just two pictures. So consider this figure only. Let m is the mass of the ball in the kg. See, whatever the notation, guys, I am taking, that will be constant flow for all the governors. Okay, so m is the mass of the ball in kg. W is the weight of the ball in newtons mg. T is the tension in the arms in the newton. Right? What is T? T is nothing but tension in the arm in newtons. Okay, newton means. Is what m? the tension in the arms okay so p you can see the arrow acting from this point let us say uh, let me call this point as a let us a so it is acting towards the point b right okay so next is what is the tension 
w so omega is nothing but the angular velocity of arm and the ball about the spindle axis there is means what this arms okay this arms right this arms and this lie masses they are revolving along with the spindle so whenever they are revolving along with the spindle they will have some speed n rpm and they will have some angular velocity omega okay so we can say that r is the radius of path of the rotation means what the distance between this point distance between the center of the fly mass and the spindle axis so that is nothing but the r so it is called as a horizontal distance from the center of the ball to the spindle axis in meters so you have to take it in the meters okay is it clear and last fc is the centrifugal force acting on the ball in the newtons m omega square r and what is h h is nothing but the height of the governors in the meter so to do the analysis of a simple governor okay to do the analysis of a simple right governor i have considered this figure and i have considered this notations okay okay and very very important point which you have to understand and analysis maybe you might come under this doubt but i am just solving it it is assumed that it is assumed that weight of the arms links and sleeves see very very important weight of the arms links and sleeve is negligible 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 as compared to as compared to this m as compared to the mass of the fly balls so tumche je fly masses hai tyacha peksha weight of the arms links sleeve ye khup as negligible hai and that is why we are they are neglected okay so tumhala asa vatel ki sir uh, you have considered the mass m of the ball fly ball you haven't considered for the links you haven't considered for the arms you haven't considered for the sleeve this is nothing but a sleeve na so that is why during the because uh, neglecting that will not have any much impact on your final answer or final result guys uh, uh, so just 5 minutes last and then we'll finish off i'll give you the attendance just tell me have you understand this have you understand this and now just i will derive the formula and then we will stop so just just tell me message me have you understand this analysis how i have done okay now look over here okay and the second university was up now we have to take the moments about the point o what is point o what is point o point o is nothing but the arms intersection point arms intersection right so about this point o now we are considering for the analysis that uh case number 1 where p and o are at the same point so that doesn't affect much okay so taking moments about point o now tell can anybody answer how will you take the moment about point o moment about point o how will you take yes fc okay how will you take fc into fc into h fc into h na fc into h is equal to w into r You understand the moment. See F C, F C into H. What is H? Height H. F C about point O. So this is the moment like this. So now this moment is clockwise moment. Okay. And the distance between the point P, point P, and sorry, point O, and this force. F C is what force, na? Moment means what? Force multiplied by distance. Okay. So F C multiplied by uh, H, right? So let us say this is a clockwise. We will take positive, anti-clockwise. See. Doesn't matter. We take negative to the another side because finally your governor should be in the equilibrium, and for equilibrium condition, uh, it should be equal to the zero, na? right? For equilibrium condition, summation of f x is equal to zero, and summation of f y is equal to zero. So I am doing same thing here. Whatever you have done in the mechanics, okay? So I am applying the this one. So f c into h is equal to omega into r. Is it clear? What is omega? Sorry, omega not w. What is W? W is nothing but the weight, and the distance between the force the line of action of W and O is nothing but the R. So this is the moment. So this is the anti-clockwise moment. Negative or vice versa, you can take a clockwise negative, anti-clockwise positive. Doesn't matter. Finally, it has to be into the equilibrium. So I'm getting F C into H is equal to omega into R. But what is F C? What is F C? Omega M omega. mg into r so mm gets cancelled mm gets cancelled finally you are getting finally you are getting a formula h is equal to g into omega because m gets cancelled r gets cancelled 
and M gets cancelled. So H is equal to G upon omega square. Okay, but but my dear students, what is omega? What is omega? Two pi n by sixty, right? What is omega? Two pi n by sixty. So put this omega in omega square is equal to two pi n by sixty bracket square. You will get a final result as H is equal to nine point eighty one upon. See what is G? Nine point eighty one. So final answer is. H is equal to 895 upon n square. So this is your final equation in meters. So from this equation, you can see that the height of the governor H is inversely H is inversely proportional to the n. S is inversely proportional to n means what? As the speed means speed to which are denominator made up. H to which are numerator made up. Means that is the relation. What we understand? H is inversely proportional to the n. So this is the formula. Now, once you have got this formula, H is equal to 985 upon n square meters. Okay. So if you know n, if you know n, you will get a H. If you know H, you will get the n. So this formula gives you the relation between the H and the n. And based on this relation, you can design a wide governor. But this wide governor is not used almost in any of the applications. because this is a very simplest and it has lot of limitations what are the limitations that i will explain in the next lecture and also let us understand how we can modify this limitation and then how we can use the porter governor